<coughs> okay, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, today I will start talking about a new topic in <coughs> our uh, client server architecture and systems. This is the topic of multi-threading. So we'll talk about multi-threaded client server. And here is, uh, I'll just show you, there is this tutorial. This is on the net. You can go to this site. This is called www.tutorialpoint.com, uh, Java, multi-threading, etc. And you will come here to the Java multi-threading system. Uh, what do we mean by threads or multi-threading? What is this concept about multi-threading? You have heard about that in uh, uh, operating system courses, of course. Uh, I'm not sure if you have written any code with multi-threading, but let's uh, try. Here is what we mean by multi-threading. This is, of course, we are talking Java, but in general, this, is, uh, this applies almost to any system. So Java provides built and support for multi-threaded programming. Now, what is multi-threaded program? A multi-threaded program contains two or more parts that can run concurrently. Concurrently means at the same time. They are in parallel. Two or more parts, they run in parallel. Each part of the program is called a thread. Each thread defines a specific path of execution. Usually a thread uh, provides computation. Both threads uh, provide the same time type of computation. Let me explain what I mean by that. What I mean by uh, what I mean by the fact. <coughs> let's see. Here is let's say uh, a thread. Or oh, let's let me put it this way. This I will call this thread, thread one, and I will call this <coughs> thread two. So there are two threads. Now this one, this has a path of computation. It computes something, and this guy computes the same thing but a different pace so this one makes computation let's say uh, both of them makes let's say a multiply x times y and this one also makes the same thing multiplies x by y but for example at one point this thread receives x to be 2 times 3 equals 6 this guy receives different input let's say 3 times 4 equals 12 then this guy takes 5 times 21 equals 105 and this one takes, let's say, 4 times 4 equals 16, and so on. So, <clears throat> so these are two threads. They do the same computation, and they run on the same system. Both makes multiplication, but this one receives different numbers. This receives inputs, this receives inputs, and both will generate output. That's basically what the concept of a thread is. So a thread, in reality, is a piece of the code which runs concurrently with another one and uh, these two pieces or two threads they as i said they make the same computation but at different rates this one could be faster this one is slower this one receives inputs two three this one receives three four and so on that's how the uh, the concept of the thread now why do we need uh, multi-threading? So multi-threading, as we said, it's a specialized form of multitasking. By multitasking means, we mean different tasks are being computed at the same time concurrently. Uh, multi-threading requires less overhead than multitasking processing. So uh, 
a thread probably needs very small memory, very short CPU cycle, and so on. I need to define another term related to thread, a process. Usually in operating systems like in Unix, they use the word process, which consists of the memory space allocated by the operating system that can contain one or more threads. The process can have more threads. And a thread cannot exist on its own. A thread has to exist as part of a process. It must be part of a process. And a process remains running until all of the non daemon threads are done executing. Let's say, assume here, assume I have process one has uh, created thread one, thread two, thread three to execute. And let's say each one of them makes multiplication or division or subtraction. So P P1 ends only when T1, T2, and T3 terminate. As long as any, any one of these threads is active, P1 continues to remain active. That's in, in general. Uh, so why do we need multi-threading? Multi-threading enables us to write very efficient programs that make maximum use of the CPU because idle time can be kept to a minimum. Remember, if I am running a process, two processes, one process at one point of time can, uh, can wait for some uh, paging or so for some input output. So the second process will be waiting for too long time. But if I run the process as the threads and the threads they do very small computation and go back in the cycle, then I can run more threads and more processes at the same time. So one server with, let's say, many clients, many clients could be many threads. The uh, Here is what we call life cycle of a thread. A thread goes through various stages in its life cycle. For example, a thread is born. I create a thread. I start a thread, start it running and the thread runs, and then the thread dies. Following diagram, let's show what we mean by that. This is, uh, let me increase this guy so we can be, we can see it. This is the life cycle of a thread. So here, this is my thread, it's a new thread. Then the program starts the thread, so I start running, so it's runnable now. Runnable means it can run on the, on the CPU, here it can be waiting, waiting, let's say the thread wants to read from a file and the file is being brought from the disk, so I am waiting for it. Uh, I can be timed waiting, which means I wait for, I sleep for five milliseconds and then run again, and then the thread can terminate. So it's terminated. So when you kill the thread or it's done, it's complete, thread completes its task and it's terminated. Here, when he said uh, there is a, a time sleep, like this line right here, and then when the interval of waiting expires, let's say wait for uh, 100 microseconds, I wait for 100 microseconds, then I start again, I become runnable. Here I am waiting for an event. Okay, let's say wait luck, so I am I am uh, being locked for uh, until I get some data from outside or until I get attention from the printer, for example, and then I get signal to start again. So I go back to runnable. So those are the, this is the life cycle of a thread. Now, uh, I, I did not answer, I will come back to the slide later, but I did not answer the question, why do I need threads in general. Let me show this example. I'll show you an example why threads are very important and where would they, they be used. Let me create a new slide here. Okay, uh, let's do uh, a server. This is my server. Okay, now this server and let's let me show two clients. This is client one. 
for client one and uh, client two is my second client all right and here i have the sockets for the server and uh, let me just change the fill here i will call this uh, socket socket client one and socket client two okay now this guy client one will connect into this one and client two will connect here note that this is the server this is my server let's say the server is a database server db server so i have uh, Okay, let me just. So this is a database server. And let's say client one is already connected to the server. Client two is already connected to the server. And uh, at some point of time, client one makes the request. This is SQL statement. Let me put it this way. This is pseudo code. Select star uh, where is my star from let's say table one so i'm selecting everything from table one and assume let me just make my assumption here table one table one has let's say one million records so table one is very large. It has 1 million records. So when I say this uh, okay client one now is asking through the socket asking to select star which means select everything from the server. I'm coming through socket one. And client two wants to select same thing star from table two. There is the database has two tables, table one and table two. And let me do the following table two. Assume that table two has only 100 records very small okay so table two has now for now let's assume that the to execute statement sql select star from table one on the server from so, uh, going through the uh, uh, client uh, server client one or socket client one let's say for each of these records let me put here it takes uh, 60 seconds one minute just it's an assumption and here let's say this one takes uh, two seconds to execute this one takes two seconds this one takes 60 seconds now imagine that i have the server of course now you can write here the create a new socket uh, open socket and this one will have the accept and then after you do the accept of both clients then client one sends this select statement now while 
while the client one is being served by the uh, server, client two has to wait. So this is the sequence of the clients, how it will go. Let me put the sequence here. This is client one executes. And after that, we will have client two. Execute. Actually, it will put them above each other. This is the term here. And uh, so they take term. And then you repeat this. Okay, just make more space here. Okay. All right. Okay, I will show what I'm trying to do in a second. What I'm trying to do here is just want to show that client one executes and it will it takes 60 seconds. Let me put it here. Actually, it's been big the whole thing. Takes this guy, takes 60 seconds. This one takes 2 seconds. This one takes the seconds and this one takes now see what happens if client one executes first it will take 60 seconds so client two will be waiting 60 seconds until client one finishes then the server can provide service to client two although this is access to the data database the database is not too busy client two is very uh, is waiting for client one to finish it only takes two seconds to run it gets its data and come back now client two assuming there is a loop going back to client one client one executes 60 seconds and client two uh, executes for two seconds so what's the result the result is i have here client one consumes 120 seconds, which are two minutes. Client two, four seconds of execution. However, client two ends up waiting for, to finish, for client two to finish, it will wait 122 seconds before it can finish, actually 124 seconds for client two. So, why? Because client two has to wait for client one until it finishes in sequence. So the multi-threading now, we can solve this problem. How do we solve this problem? Let's see. So let's duplicate this slide. And so this is my slide now. Instead of client one, I will call this, this is a client one, this is client two. And here, on the server, 
I will have what I will call a thread. And let me shape this well red. So this is thread one. Okay. And I have this is thread two. So I create this thread one is connected to the first socket. Okay, and this is my shape. Okay, where is my another line? Okay. So now what I do is client one connects to the socket and the socket is immediately served by this thread. So this thread takes the statement which is select star from table one, starts working on table one, and will immediately the server will be will be ready for client two to be served. So uh, it comes, now I'll change this uh, structure here, okay? Change this structure instead of being uh, sequential. Okay, it will be parallel. Okay. And I will delete this guy from here and delete this one. This goes up. This is client one, and here is my client two. Okay, and this is my uh, another client too. Okay. Okay, this terminates. Let's terminate this guy. And do it with the black. Terminate. Terminate. Okay. So now, note that with this thread, with this implementation, what I did, client one now, client one goes to to the server through the socket one. Thread one will take care of this statement. It will read it using the in and out. I'm not going through the uh, uh, syntax of the language here. I'm just saying that thread one will take the statement. It will go to the table, which has one million record, and it will access the database. Uh, so let me uh, put this now, try to do it in a different manner here. This is my server. Okay. Okay, the server database, I will delete this and I will build actually the 
show the database how it looks here. Let me select uh, what is my database view. Okay, it's something like this. All right. It's my database. And within the database, I will have two tables. This is table one. This is table one. And there is another table. I'll call it table two. Okay. Okay, this is now table one is very small, as you could see. And the thread, this thread now will access this database at table one. And table two, thread two will access table two. Actually, let me do it this way. Like this. Okay, so now thread one, takes the value from the uh, socket one, it takes the select from table one, it goes to table one and it starts executing. And uh, similarly, let me do it again. So uh, this is thread two actually. What did I do here? So this is thread two will access table two. This is table two. Okay. So now note that. Uh, Client one will access the data, will access the server. It will be received by thread one. Thread one starts accessing table one. And client two does not have to wait on uh, client two to finish. Client two will access its own socket, which is handled by the second thread. Those threads, thread one and thread two, they are working in parallel. As you could see here, this is the domain of thread one so here let's put it let's write it down here that's my thread one thread t1 is working right here and thread two is working on the other side so note the difference thread two will execute the, the statements coming from client two, and it will take two seconds plus two seconds and four seconds. Thread two will be done and it will terminate. Thread one will take 60 plus 60, 120 seconds, but that's normal because the SQL statement is very large. It's not because uh, client one has to wait on, some, on anyone else. So in parallel, client one, will finish the execution in 60, in 60 plus 60, 120 seconds. Client 2 will finish its execution in 4 seconds. Now client 2 can do whatever it wants during this time. This is the value of uh, 
the multi-threaded system. That's the main value because I allow thread one to handle everything that comes through the socket. I ha allow thread two to handle everything that comes through the second socket. So if the second socket SC2 is connected to client two, then client two can freely access the database or access any service by the server. That's the main the main idea behind uh, uh, multi-threading. You allow things to execute concurrently. Concurrently means in parallel. So I have thread one here. This is thread one is working at the same time when thread two is working. Now, when we say at the same time, I have to be very careful here. I have to uh, create one more slide to show what I mean in parallel. In parallel, unless unless you have uh, this is a new slide here. All right. Uh, let me show something. I mean here. This is my. I'll call this my CPU. Right, and here I will have uh, this thing. I will call it my Q. This is my Q, and I will put it in yellow. And I will have my threads. And this is my server here. Oops. Okay. Okay, let me put this no fell. That's my server. And I will just write here this is my server. So within the server, I have two threads. This is thread one. And let me put it in red as I've done before. Okay, that's my second thread. This is called thread two. Okay, just make it a little bigger so we can see that. Now, I didn't mean to Okay, so they, they are all the same because threads are supposed to be similar to each other. So T1, T2. And this is my, as I said, from my CPU, I get my threads actually. Let me the thread is allocated to the CPU. And usually you give it very small time as a thread it runs on the CPU for uh, let's say 10 microseconds at a time or let's say two seconds at a, at a time. So the uh, and when the thread is done, it goes back to the beginning of the queue. Okay, so this is so I will give it time, and here let the, let's say run for two seconds. Each one is given a time on the CPU. I don't allow the CPU to be dominated by one thread for all the time. So thread one comes for the two seconds. On the CPU, but remember, thread one requires 100 seconds. So when it's done, 
when thread one finishes its two seconds, it goes back to the end of the queue. Then, so I will take this here and move it, come back, thread one, thread two now, comes here, and thread one here. Okay, so now thread two has the turn and it runs for for two seconds. So now note that within a small period of time, let's do the execution. Now T1 runs for two seconds, go back to Q. Q. T2 now runs for two seconds and it ends, terminates, because all T2 requires is two seconds. Now T1, after that, after this round, T2 is finished, so I will take it out, I'll put it as terminated the only thing I have left in the in the CPU is my T1 so T1 now uh, executes for two seconds and the time out it goes back like this goes to the CPU makes the turn and come back again Two more seconds and then so t1 now t1 has two seconds go back to q then again one more time it gets allocated there is no more threads spends two seconds here Go back to the queue, no waiting time, come back and keep going back like this. Keeps going until it finishes. Actually, it makes 50 rounds until the last thing is T1, two seconds. It makes total of 50 rounds to the CPU meaning that it comes to the CPU 50 times then it terminates once it terminates then I will bring T1 take it out now it has terminated okay this is exactly what happens within the CPU. That's why we say it's in parallel. Actually, when we say it's in parallel, it means they take turns on the CPU, but because the time is so small here, I put it two seconds. Usually, it's not two seconds. Usually, it's 100, around somewhere around 100 milliseconds. This is called the time slot. I allocate time slot to the thread. It's in the order of 100 or 10 milliseconds, which is actually time invisible. It's very short time. So if, if I use 100 milliseconds, then thread two will take 10 plus 10, 20 rounds, and T1 will take uh, 60 times uh, 10, which is about 6,000 rounds until it finishes. But anyway, this is what happens. This is, let me call this here. Uh, T1 and T2 execute in parallel means take turns on using the CPU. And let me also write because the uh, Right. 
because the time slot is short in our case was two seconds t1 and t2 seem to run in parallel note the word seem to they don't really run in parallel they seem to run in parallel okay seem to run in parallel that's what we mean by threads run in parallel all right let me stop right here and i think uh, this should be enough explanation of how threads work and why do uh, why do we need them and the next step will explain how to actually execute how to create threads how to run them and what happens while they are running and then we will come into a problem we call it the mutual exclusion or the critical sections within the uh, uh, within the thread con uh, context